Hello, this is FredHK and welcome back to Guided Hacking. Today we're going to be taking a look at YAR rules. YAR rules are a way to identify and classify malware and this is done by generating rules which look for specific data within a binary and then creating conditions on that data to classify the binary as a certain malware family. So this is what a generic malware detection rule looks like. It starts off with the rule and then the rule name. So for this instance, I'm going to be looking at a generic rule that will detect the putty executable client. You have the metadata of the rule, which can outline some interesting information about the rule for others that may be looking at your rule or for you as some kind of notes or reminder as to what the rule does. Usually this will contain an author name. It will also contain a description such as detects the party binary. And then you'll create your strings and your strings are what the YAR rule is looking for within the binary. In this example, we start off with the magic. So this is the magic header and these are the two first hex values within the party binary of 4D, 5A, and this stands for MZ. If you've ever done malware analysis and looked at a portable executable for a Windows binary within a hex editor, they usually start off with this magic header here. And then we also look for the party string of party.exe, and this is a wide string, and this is just the party executable name. So you can put in a string and you can then add some more identifiers about that string afterwards, such as it being ASCII or other things, but we'll touch on that in a little bit. After that, at the end of the YAR rule, you put in your condition. So this is the condition that has to be met for the YAR rule to be correct or true when it scans a file. And the condition here is that those magic bytes of 4D 5A have to be at the entry of the binary. So at offset zero, meaning it's the first two bytes of the binary. And the binary also has to contain this string. So some more things that you can put into a YAR rule in the metadata will be something like the author, the date, version, reference, hash, which can be a example hash for your YAR rule to hit on. And as we mentioned before, a description. Then in strings, you also have more modifiers, not just the wide, you can say a full word. So this will be the full of the string test or the wide, which is if the test is stored in the binary as a string, but it's null bytes separated, then you'll put in wide so it detects on that. ASCII, so it can detect whether it's ASCII or not, and no case, so that if it's test or capital T test in the binary, then it'll match no matter what the case is. And for bytes, we also have a few other modifiers that you can use, which will be in the previous example, we looked at the magic header of 4D5A. Well, if you don't know the byte that comes after that, you can just put two question marks if this byte changes and that'll just match on any other byte. And then if you know the next byte is gonna be 8D, then you can put 8D afterwards and it'll match no matter what this byte here is. You can also do such things as a regex. So you just put them in between two forward slashes and then you can just write a regex and that'll match on anything that has any and any can just appear anywhere in the binary. In your conditionals, you have all kinds of different conditionals that you can use. You can use and, or, you can also use all and any. So these are just kind of fuzzy matches that you can do with your conditionals on the strings. And you can also specify things such as the file size being larger than three megabytes. And also you can do even more advanced things, but we'll refer to the docs for that. So within the docs, you can find all of the documentation on what YAR will support. And this will be quite a comprehensive overview of things that you can do. You can see here with some of their examples that they're looking at entry points and so on and so forth. But you also have the added functionality of modules. So these are extended modularity within Yara that you can import and you can use some of the functionalities within these to further identify different binaries. And a good example here, and one that you should be using during malware analysis is the PE module, which will allow you to search for specific things that can be found within a portable executable, such as the count of sections, 
or exports or imports as well, characteristics, and if it's a portable executable. And you can use these if you know that your YAR rule is solely going to be looking at portable executables. And there are all kinds of extensions from that, such as magic, math, .NET, and so on and so forth to make writing YAR rules super easy. Let's go and actually write a YAR rule. So we'll start off with our basic YAR rule here. And this is a YAR rule to detect the Lucifer malware. And I'll show you how I wrote this. So we begin by having two builds of the Lucifer malware. These are two different builds with two different configurations. And then I have a putty executable in here just to show that the YAR rule works when we go ahead and test that later. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by opening this within Detector Easy and TextD. E. But before I do that, here's a word from Guided Hacking. So I've opened those binaries within sector easy and within hex D. And what I've done is opened up the strings of the binary because we're dealing a lot with strings here. We can copy out some of these strings that may be unique to this binary. And then we can put that in our YAR rule. So for instance, if I wanted to say that all binaries generated by the Lucifer builder, which I used have this email password dump in them, then I'll copy that string and I can put that within my YAR rule. And I've just put that as string two here and email password dump being in there. Or if I have some bytes that I want to check on, then I can go through the binary and I can find something that may be unique to this malware family such as this SQL command here. Although of course this probably isn't unique to this family, but I'll just use it for now. So instead of copying the string itself, I can copy the offset and I can go into hex D. I can then go to search, go to paste in that offset and we get to the string and I can just copy the string here to highlight it and then go in here and maybe I just want these first few bytes. So I'll take these and I'll put them into my YAR rule. So I'll put that in there and then I can say, well, maybe I don't know the last byte within this string of bytes. And then also I'm going to say that I don't want this string search to be case sensitive. So I'll say no case there. Then to match um, any binary with this YAR rule that is specifically searching for the Lucifer malware, I put the condition of the magic, it has to be found. So these bytes have to be found and that this string has to be found within the binary. Then maybe we want to just do one last regex as well. So I'll put in a regex that just searches for cannot add a so I'll start by writing a blob being before it then cannot add a and then finish it off with a blob and I can say that these two conditions have to be met or this regex has to be met as well now that I've saved this yar rule we can open a Yara tool that I've downloaded. This is just a client tool that you can use, but there are imports in Python and libraries and all kinds of other things that use Yara. So you don't have to rely on this tool. You can use whatever you want. I have the Yara tool here and I'll point it towards our Yara rule. And then I'm going to search that YAR rule against all of the binaries within the build folder within my download. So I can just type in build here and we can run it. And you can see that it has detected Lucifer on the two Lucifer builds, but has not detected it on the party build. So I hope that that was a good overview of YAR rules and how important they are. If you plan to do malware analysis, then I really recommend that you learn these because when you find new versions of malware or malware that hasn't been classified yet, it's up to you to create these rules for them. Until the next one, goodbye. If you enjoyed this video, a like would help a lot and subscribe to be notified of future uploads. 
If you haven't already, check out guidedhacking.com for a step-by-step -step introduction to game hacking and an ever-growing catalogue of content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.